Steve Julin, MMA Mania. All right, Steve, you're on with Zach whenever you're ready. All right, Zach Friedman, how are you today, sir? I'm wonderful, Steve. I uh, appreciate you calling in to interview me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I've been wanting to talk to you ever since you scored that massive win at Bellator 180 in Madison Square Garden. How did it feel to basically come in there and shock the world? Even though you were 8-2 and two coming in, a lot of people were picking against you. I Yeah, everybody was. Um, except people who knew me close. So I did get very excited. Um, you know, there's a certain picture that kind of captured my raw emotion and that's just, you know, all the hard work that goes into getting to this point and all the doubters and, you know, all those things can even make you question yourself. But at the end of the day, I put in the hard work. I believe in myself and it felt great. Um, the biggest, the big, biggest win for me was to do it in the fashion that I did it. If you ask me, I pretty much TKO'd him submitted him, and choked him unconscious. I kind of did all three. So uh, to do that all in 24 seconds, I want to say I have the fastest submission record at Madison Square Garden now. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, to beat that. So it was a great feeling. Am I remembering right that in your post-fight promo, you said that wasn't even your good arm that you submitted him with? <laughs> that is true, yes. Uh, I'm a righty, so uh, I had used my left arm to uh, to finish that choke. <laughs> so, yeah, you really did do it all. You, you knocked him out and you submitted him with the opposite arm. And you, you, I mean, you just can't get better than that. <laughs> you can't. I agree. So what led up to this point in your career? How did you first get into mixed martial arts and end up on a Bellator pay-per-view like you did? Essentially, I started wrestling at a young age of six years old and uh, I wrestled little league and I stuck with that um, all the way up through grade school, middle school and high school. And in high school, I ran into um, a pretty serious leg break my senior year, uh, the summer in between junior and senior year. And Unfortunately, when that happened, I had to get surgery on my leg, and I had a plate and some screws put in my leg, and the doctors did that to essentially allow me to wrestle that season. They wanted extra strength in the leg. In doing the surgery, I actually came down with an infection, and um, it took 12 surgery. well, it took seven surgeries to figure out that I was misdiagnosed. Um, the culture was misdiagnosed um, of the infection. I was being treated for a staph infection through seven surgeries. When in, in, in whenever we moved hospitals, they figured out that I was actually I had a pseudomonas infection. So eventually, they got me on the right uh, prescription drugs and antibiotics. And after twelve surgeries, uh, finally it started clearing up. But I essentially missed my entire year of high school. I missed out on scholarship opportunities for wrestling and I kind of had to start my life over. Um, ended up going to a private college, St. Louis University. They don't have a wrestling program. And I just started kind of missing, uh, I had a void in my, my life. So, you know, uh, I believe life is about fulfillment, personal fulfillment. Um, each of us have different fulfilling um, you know, each of us have different things that will fulfill us. And mine was especially uh, competition. And in, in competition, um, I was really missing the fact that, you know, what, what made me happy was being able to wrestle or being able to compete one-on-one -on -one with someone. So I kind of started exploring my options of what I could do. And I ran into jujitsu, and that's when I started kind of training jujitsu. In turn, got me involved with boxing. Um, in turn, got me involved with mixed martial arts. Um, and you know, the rest is history from there. I got on a good team, and I just kept working hard. And opportunities kept arising, and I took advantage of it um, all while trying to finish school and all while trying to maintain a, a day job and I've been able to do both since 
Um, I've never been a full-time fighter. I've always been a full-time employee and a full-time fighter. So, so that's kind of how I've got to this point. Well, you know, I might dispute that you've never been a full-time fighter because it sounds like you were fighting for a whole year just to have your life, and then you were fighting after that just to maintain your commitment to both school and to competing in those sports. So it seems like you were a fighter from the very beginning. Pretty much, yeah. I have. I've been fighting since, since I can remember. And now you've transitioned all of this from wrestling to jiu-jitsu to boxing to mixed martial arts. Do you find that having that wrestling background really helped you with jiu-jitsu and with MMA in general? I think um, I think anybody can learn to wrestle. And it doesn't take 10 years to do, you know. But what I did learn uh, through wrestling is the mental toughness. That's something that takes a long time to develop how to be in adversity, to fight through, to dig deep and keep going. You know, it's it, the easy thing is to quit, to submit or to tap out or cover up. But it's whenever, you know, your hand breaks in the first round and you still have a full championship fight to fight and not give up. That's where you really learn the most about yourself. And I've been in that situation. So I would say the thing that wrestling brought the most to me was uh, mental fortitude. Well, coincidentally enough, your opponent, Sadawad, he's somebody who's also broken his left hand in a fight. In fact, much like you did with your leg when it was broken, he had a metal plate put in his hand and screwed in to hold it together. So what are your thoughts on Sadawad here coming up at Bellator 186? Um, much respect. Um, I don't think you're going to see us get in each other's face and build the hype up. Um, it's just not in, it's not either of our MOs. Um, I think we're both respectful fighters. I think we both have families and fans that kind of expect more humility, um, than the Conor McGregor aggression and, and crack talking, you know. So I just expect, uh, a very durable, fighter inside he's much more experienced than i am and i know that he's very gritty and durable um so i really focus on this camp on being relaxed breathing and and just really knowing that i'm preparing for a 15 minute fight his last fight did go 15 minutes. It went to a decision at Bellator 178. And I think people were underestimating his opponent a little bit because even though Ryan Quinn didn't have a big name, he was 7-0 and in Bellator. He went out there and beat a guy who had a great record, and that's what you have a chance to do here as well. You got it, yeah. And, and, and in looking at that record from Ryan Quinn, what I noticed is that his 7-0 and Bellator record, it didn't include really any notable wins. So I'm guessing there were more undercard fights. Um, not to take anything away from Ryan, but I just know that, you know, there weren't really notable names, and that's probably what kind of hurt his ability to stand out with a 7-0 and record. I don't know any other lightweights that had seven straight wins in Bellator. So um it's kind of unfortunate for him not to be recognized for that, but uh, Saad was able to come in, and I think it was a split decision, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think you could have saw the fight kind of go either way, um, but it was a you know a real back and forth battle, a lot of scrambles, um, kind of what I expect to go on in our fight. And speaking of notable names, when I was looking over your record before the Bellator NYC fight, the one name that stood out to me was Aaron Darrow, a former opponent of the caveman Dave Rickles, who was actually originally supposed to be fighting tonight as we record this interview, but his opponent pulled out at the last minute. But what would you say was your most notable fight before Bellator? Um, I would have to say uh, it was a championship fight against Robert Washington. Um, it was kind of headlined here in St. Louis. And it was a really big deal because me and Robert were friends, um, as, as well as training partners. Um, he did represent another gym. Um, I represented St. Charles MMA. He represented Finney's MMA. And it's kind of known in this area. We are really head to head. We're kind of the, you know, 
we're kind of big. Uh, it's like the St. Louis Cardinals and the Cubs. We're we're big uh, villains, or I don't know what's the correct word I'm looking for. Rivalry. Or, um, it's like a rivalry. Yes, yes. So we're it's a it's the biggest rivalry in St. Louis as far as gyms, and their best lightweight and our best lightweight represented. But the thing was, is I did a lot of training with Rob. He would come over a lot and train with us. So I had many, many, many sparring sessions with Rob. And we both were willing to kind of put that aside and see who the best man was. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of wins for St. Louis in that night and that we showed that, hey, you can be friends with someone and train with them and still fight. Um, but we did get, you know, paid quite handsomely, I would say, for the local show, which does have some influence in making something like that happen. If they didn't want to pay me, I would probably wouldn't have done that. So, um, I think that, that that, that does help, but I would say the Robert Washington fight. It was a great back and forth fight. He landed some good punches. I landed some good punches, and and I really finished that fight with a major takedown slam that I thought TKO'd him. Uh, so there was kind of a weird ending to that fight, but I think that would be my answer. All right, well, I'm going to go back and look for a video, see if I can find that and watch it myself. But in the meantime, since we're talking about Missouri and all the things that go on in the fight scene there, what does it mean to you to see the success that Michael Chandler has had coming from there? And is he somebody that you would want to fight in the future in Bellator? Um, I only want to keep fighting. Uh, well, to answer the question first, uh, Mike has been someone I've followed ever since he actually did some training at St. Charles MMA back when Tyron Woodley was there. Um, we've also had Andrew Sanchez, an ultimate fighter winner there. So we've had some really good guys in our gym. Um, I think I'm the only one so far to say I don't need to go move to New York or California to take it to the next level. Um, I, I don't believe in that. Um, so I've stayed loyal to my gym and, and loyal to my area. And it's paid off so far. As far as uh, fighting Mike, I think my answer to that is I only want to continue fighting uh, to put myself in position for a belt. Um, I think Mike is past that point now. Um, I think he's just looking for big super fights. And I probably don't fit that uh, that bill for him. So um, as far as his interest in ever fighting me, I don't think that would be the case. Um, actually, after MSG, he sent me a really, really nice personal message saying that I had earned a new fan in him that week, that the way I represented myself and carried myself was great, um, and that I shouldn't stop there and uh, keep working hard and keep going. So just to kind of get a personal message from Mike was really cool. Um, and I actually spent time in the locker room with Brent Primus as well. You know, I'd like to see them kind of handle their business again and uh, and go from there. I think we all would. There was definitely unfinished business at the end of that fight because, boy, did Chandler want to continue that fight. He wasn't allowed to, but he sure wanted to keep going. Yeah, and it was cringing watching him step on his foot like that. I could only imagine the, the, the pain that must have caused yeah, I I kind of winced too watching it. I was I was having my reaction to the Anderson Silva Chris Weidman fight. Like, oh no, I don't need to see that anymore. No, exactly. All right. Well, let's hope there's none of those kind of injuries here with you and Sadawan. You've both had enough things broken in your lifetime, so maybe the two of you can get out of this fight clean. Agreed. Zach, it's been such a pleasure. I've enjoyed our conversation today, but before I let you go, I gotta ask, where did the altar boy come from? How did you get a nickname like that? I love this question because um, there's so many ways to tell the story. But first and foremost, I actually grew up in parochial school, so I was an altar boy. <laughs> um, I do have a Christian faith, um, but I was actually weighing in at an amateur fight. And I was sitting there minding my own business, and one of the ring announcers, Tony Biondo, came up to me, and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm weighing in. And he kind of looked at me, and he said, you fight? And I said, yeah. And he's like, man, you look more like an altar boy than a fighter. And, like, he just lit up, and he goes, oh, my gosh, that should be your nickname. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. That's kind of that's weird. Well, the next night I walk out, he decides to call me the altar boy. 
And I remember specifically people in the crowd, their reaction to it was laughing and kind of heckling. And, and I said, okay, I better go out here and put on a whooping on this guy. And I, so I think they all, I all kind of earned some respect. But what I've noticed is that Alter Boy is, is also, you know, it's funny. But at the same time, if you spell it differently as an A-L-T-E-R, I almost represent that as well um, because I'm kind of this one person. I'm in business, and I try to represent myself as a professional the best I can. And then when it comes time to go in the cage, I kind of go as an alter ego, my alter boy image, you know, like to where now I'm a whole different person that everyone else would never guess. So a lot of times people meet me and they later find out I'm a fighter and they're just in such shock the way I carry myself, the way, you know, I talk and represent myself. They're like, I can't believe you fight. So I kind of play off Alter Boy with an A and Alter Boy with an E. So uh, I'm actually kind of trying to in- integrate that into my image and uh, see where I can go with that. Well, you know, I think we can even come up with a third definition because I think you altered the trajectory of Aaron Pico's career with that win. I did. I forced him to consider a weight class, uh, which, you know, I think he does fit in better at 145, and I think it hopefully humbled him a little bit, you know. Whenever he, at the weigh-ins, he said that Bellator hired me to do two things, sell tickets and knock people out. I think you can see my reaction from that. I I smiled because it really upset me uh, and that he thought I would be such a walkover. Um, So I think it was a humbling experience for Aaron. And hopefully one day we can uh, build that up into a possible rematch. I'd like to see that. And I do think it humbled him because he, like you said, he changed weights, found a better fit for him and came out and did better in his second fight. So I think you had a good effect on him, both altering and altering. I think it it got a little Christian humility into him. (laughs) I agree. I like your, uh, I like your perspective on that. Well, I want to wrap this up by plugging Bellator 186 again, November 3rd, Bryce Jordan Center in University Park, Pennsylvania. And, Zach, if you have anything you'd like to plug, sponsors or social media, please go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you to my uh, company, Working Spaces. We're a furniture dealership. Happy to help anybody that's looking to procure uh, office furniture. Um, and I'd also like to thank my sponsors. Autoplex Extended Solutions, they uh, handle extended car warranties. I'd like to thank Show Me Credit Solutions, they handle uh, helping people fix their credit so they can apply for loans and get a house and those certain things. Also want to thank uh, any other sponsors out there, uh, Angry Beaver. Um, I want to thank my team, St. Charles MMA, as well as Trials MMA out in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, and thank you to all my friends, family, and all my fans.